Hello, this is a Bluthner style 7 grand piano, it's 190 centimetres long, made in 1898. It just come into stock, so just want to appreciate the piano and see what sort of work they might need to do. It's been fully restored by a firm called 1066, who we're familiar with. We've bought several pianos they've restored before, and uh, generally beautifully done. Well, you, you can guarantee that they're, they'll, they'll do a very good job on it, and looking around the side, that's repolished, French polished and uh, it's the kind of thing we're always doing to pianos as well, so um, the, the rosewood is so wonderful on Bootner Grands. Now the legs are darker, that's normal, we tend to try and make them lighter when we repolish the piano, but actually they are dark originally, um, and down the side there, it's, if you look at the front end here, it's slightly faded, so um, that is something we're going to try and address. Our polish is going to try and make it less less fade. It's just that side it seems because the top of the piano doesn't seem faded and there's no fade line there and the veneer is well typically superb for a boot and a grand. So that's a, it's a kind of grand we're always looking for. From, from about 1880 to 1925, very similar really. The rosewood is better for the, on the older ones but the mechanism was almost the same. I just realised I made a mistake, it's a style 8, because style 8 is alicot, has this extra string on the top here, it doesn't really make it much difference, we like both style 7 and 8, but uh, it, so it's the alicot style, they've refinished it very beautifully, they've actually refinished the soundboard differently from what we'd expect, normally there's a decal on it, and there wasn't a decal, but the serial number's always inside the Blutner piano, so if you don't have a serial number in your Blutner ground, you have to take the action out very carefully so you don't touch the hammers and break them off. Um, to find the serial number at the back. Now the tuning pins are, are, t are very tight and this is a, a brand new rest plank so the 1066 always do wonderful work. There's by the way the, uh, one of the ways I know it's 1066 is because it's written on there, the 1066 pianos, a Cambridge firm um, who we do know well and uh, as I say we have sold many of their pianos before that they've restored. They did restore a lot of pianos in the well, I, I think I met them first in the early 90s. That, that used to be a date, and that's a 1066 badge. Used to have the date of the restoration and the pitch of the piano. Um, so I'll just show you the new rest bank. By the way, they've restrung the piano very beautifully in the bass. Very rich and very tight tuning pins, so that's really important to uh, have tight tuning pins, obviously. Even though there's a new rest plank, you still want to check them, make sure they're tight. So I've taken the top rail off, and you can very clearly see the multi-layer delignate rest plank, um, and it's been installed beautifully. The different layers uh, means if the wood dries out, the le each layer tends to, tends to move differently, so it keeps it really tight, and obviously being multi-layered is, is going to be tight. So when you drill the holes, um, it's, uh, it stays tight for longer. There's also rock maple rest banks that are used uh, a lot these days, so if you're a piano tuner who wants to comment on delignate rest banks, please do, or rock maple for that matter. Um, and uh, you can see it's, it's, uh, it's going to hold. It's like a new rest plank. A lot of new pianos have the same rest plank. Here's a 1930s Star 4 that we got in. By the way, this has some standard action. We'll look at that in a minute. But if you look carefully, you see this black here. That's what how Blutner's finished off their rest banks initially. And if that's not black, um, you, you may be able to see that that's not black. It's likely to have been replaced. The rest plank's likely to have been replaced, if you can see from the front there. So this is the original Blue's patent action with the L straight spring um, and up to 1925. So this is the standard modern action that you get in all Blutners, I think, after 1925. So this is a standard roller lever action. I forgot to mention that Bluton have changed these key tops. They're not ivory, although you see a grain in them, but it's identical grain in all of them. That's the typical replacement of, I think, about 20 years ago. So. I'm not quite sure. I've reached out to 1066 to see if they can tell me a bit more about the piano. Um, and they've changed the traces here. Very often when they dried out they got, got cracks here and you can repair those cracks and one or two may not be a problem. But it's a good idea to change them because then you also end up with new felts without having to refelt the old ones. So it's been refitted with new Arbor hammers, um, most commonly refitted in blue and the pianos, also Renner obviously. but. Arbol this is, has a green undercovering. You can usually be sure that that's going to be an Arbol hammer, and uh, they are hardly used. If we look at the top here, I think that 
the po possibly that looks like they were marked with carbon paper f for for when it was first they were first put on just to get some markings in them because normally they're not that black. Um, I might not, might not be correct there, but we sometimes mark them with carbon paper just to make sure the hammer's in line and uh, just so it's easier to voice for the unicorder. Um, that's I've shown that on earlier videos. We don't always do that, it's only when it's really necessary to do. Um, now this back rail here was slightly out of regulation. Um, all the let-offs were letting off too early and this was too low so I've just raised it slightly in the middle there. There's still some regulation to do on the let-offs. So the let-offs are this button here which uh, pulls the jack out if you see on this bottom key here. Um, that button interacts with the jack and pulls it out. Um, so that's got to be as late as possible and still work properly. So it's adjusted with this uh, uh, screw here, so you just turn that and it takes it up or down. And I would say get it as late as you can, but it's still working properly. By the way, you might have wondered what this little button here is. Uh, and I've been told that it was put on because they wanted to patent the action and someone else had made a similar one. I don't know if that's re really the true story or whether it actually does help the jack under. I will, I, at first, I always used to think that's what was happening. But it's not very p powerful. Um, if you've got any ideas on that, that'd be really useful to hear. I want to show you that it's not this that causes the jack to go back under, there's a spring underneath and apparently the tension of that spring is really crucial in terms of the feel of the piano, so, so the restoration department tell me. There's the spring and I didn't realise it was going to have uh, 1066 stock number or uh, restoration number written on there, there's 1066 written on there too and Blutner and uh, you can see that spring under there so that's what pulls the jack back under. I'm sorry I can't show you very well but um, another day I'll try and show it a bit better. We have a model action that you, we could perhaps show it on and that's really important apparently how that's regulated but that's what push, pulls the jack back under. Looking at the less off, this is middle C, which you've roughly reg regulated it pretty much as close as you can get it. So if you play it, you get maximum power and it, set, it lets off safely. And this is the F below it. And I don't know if you can see, but it's not getting anywhere nearer than about one centimeter from the string. It's very common to find Blute and badly regulated. I don't quite know why, um, but uh, it's not hard to put right. So quite a lot of interesting things to say about this piano, not a huge amount of work to do. The regulation of the let-offs, the uh, dampers, are, I didn't show you that, they're quite bad really, and the regulation. So, um, and the key dip, that's acceptable I think. Um, very often you find key dip, uh, funnily enough yesterday I was making a video of one, the key dip 12, now that's far too high. Uh, 10 to 10 point foo is pretty normal for a blue, and you might want slightly more key dip if the keyboards tend to have 11. So people find it a bit strange when there's not enough key dip. The unicord I didn't show that that's going far too far over. Um, so there's bits of regulation to do. So uh, 1066 restored, I've reached out to them to find out any more detail. Not quite sure when. Looking at the colour of the strings, maybe 2005 or so. And Delignet rest, new Delignet rest plank, that's wonderful. And beautifully French polish. So a bit fading to try and improve. And generally the work's done very beautifully and last of all the touch as usual we need to try and regulate that get it a little bit more close and they put new arbel hammers on and maybe they're slightly he heavier than uh, we would have liked nowadays perhaps there's more choice than there was in those days because we put slightly lighter hammers on not had to add so much uh, to the keys but you can see that key there has got a new lead in it um, the one that's not painted over black that's also new lead in that one and it's almost maximum lead that you can get in these so we would we can still uh, weight them a bit lighter if necessary and so it, just to even them up a bit because 60 grams is uh, a little bit high for that for that one we want to bring it down perhaps to 55 at least 50, we've mentioned this many times before so 54 in the middle is fine you could go down as low as 48 if you want a lighter touch So that's a Bluesner style 8, the Alicot scaling, and made in 1898, 190 centimetres long, just come into stock. So it's beautifully restored, really. And typically, Malu is Bluesner's are. 
the ideal domestic piano in many ways. So some bits of tidying up to do, but generally in extremely good condition and I'm very pleased to get it in stock. They're so consistent and when they're restored well, they're just so lush really. If, if you've got a piano and you'd like us to assess it for restoration, just please do let us know. Please write to info at robertspianos.com. If you're interested in this piano, then please do write to us again, saying what you'd like to do. If you want to try it out for a while, Thank you very much for listening.